today we're going to talk about uh, our Mitsubishi 4G63 range of billet blocks and what the main differences are and applications and what the improvements that we've done in our design uh, to cater for the high output uh, engines that people are building these days. So here we have uh, three, uh, the three main variants. So this is our six bolt, or what's referred to as a six bolt, uh, the seven bolt, and the Evo four through nine, which is your later model stuff. So if we come back to the six bolt, these are referred to as a six bolt uh, because the crankshaft has six flywheel bolts in it. The crankshaft is actually uh, different to the two later model blocks in that the, the bearing journals are wider. And then uh, we have a different bell housing bolt pattern here. So you can see we have four bolts um, instead of five. So on the later models, they went to an extra bolt. Um, but the, the two upper bolts are in the same position. Um, this particular one is a, uh, a solid version. So this is one that we use for drag racing only. And um, you can see the, um, the deck uh, has no water jackets. Um, and then the front is slightly different to the others as well. Obviously there's no water jacket in the front here. Um, these oil channels and uh, the oil pump uh, housing there are, are slightly different. Then in a, we do them in a, a solid, which were these two. We do a uh, the full water jacketed, which has the holes in the deck for the water to run through the head gasket into the cylinder head as it would normally do on a factory block. Uh, and then we have what we call a dry deck, which is this one here on the stand. So basically a dry deck is we are taking a water jacketed block and we're putting a drag raised deck on it so then the water can't run from the block into the head through the head gasket. It has to come out of the block and go into the head separately. So the reason that we do this is because basically what we can do then is we can have a very high boost application where you've got extreme loads on the head gasket um, which, and, but set it up as if it's a drag race head gasket but still have a water cooled engine. So that gives you a hybrid if you will where we have examples of uh, clients that run 70 pounds of boost in street cars, they can drive the car to the track, race it and drive it home, like roll racing or drag racing or that sort of thing, uh, where they are making three, uh, 350, 400 horsepower per cylinder. So if we have a look at a cylinder head for that type of application. So here's a uh, so this particular cylinder head is going on this block. Uh, so what you can see what we've done here is we've come in and we've welded the water holes and closed them off in the head and then done the finishing machine work. This head has been CNC poured by us. And then you can see we've added a fitting in the front to feed water into the head. The water runs through the cylinder head and then comes out the rear into the thermostat housing as per OEM. So when we run this system, we run a drag racing head gasket with it. So this is our, our firing head gasket that we supply. Uh, so that's a, it's a copper gasket. And then we have individual rings uh, that will sit. So we machine the top of the sleeve with a little receiver groove that the ring sits in to locate it in position and then the gasket sits on top and then the ring itself, once the ring's in position, the ring is two to two and a half thousandths thicker than the gasket 
and so once you torque the cylinder head down that will uh, apply a preload on the uh, firing to seal it and then basically the, the copper is acting as a spacer uh, to support the rest of the cylinder head and then seal for your oil drains. So all of these blocks come in, a, in an additional variation in wet, dry and solid but we add 6 millimetres to the deck which we refer to as a 4G64. So the 4G64 was uh, an engine that was released in something like a, a delivery van or something and it has a taller deck and a lot of people uh, liked to uh, modify, uh, take a 4G64 block and then use that instead of the 4G63 block because they can add a longer con rod for any particular stroke that you might be using, especially once you start stroking the engines a little bit more, then your rod, uh, rod to stroke ratio starts to tighten up. So if you can add a six mil longer rod, uh, that sort of brings that rod to stroke ratio back. And, and so we, could, we supply that for all three blocks, which is, um, which is unique in terms of the, uh, the six and seven bolt blocks because they were never available in a 4G64 option, unlike the Evo. So um, that's, that's something that um, is another advantage of going to a built block, is you have that option. All of our blocks also have the oil squirter option too, which, you know, in a factory application, if you're using a factory 4G64 block, they don't have, um, they don't have oil squirters. The oil squirters are only available in the in the wet and the dry blocks they're not available or they're not put into the drag blocks because uh, because of the short duration nature of drag racing we don't put the oil squirters in those blocks unless someone specifically asks for it um, but you can't a 4g64 block didn't have oil squirter provision in it uh, but obviously ours do so as you can see on the base all the blocks come with a four bolt main Okay, so all of our blocks have a, um, have a one-piece cradle. So we can see that instead of having the block come down the sides with a cap hanging in the middle, uh, the block splits at the crank centre line. You have a one-piece cradle that comes off. Uh, so we have four bolt mains, have two on the ends because we've only got one cylinder for that saddle, whereas these three saddles have two cylinders to deal with, so they want a little bit more clamping force. Being, you know, a, a one-piece cap with the side all integral, it makes it extremely rigid. It's dowed, so the, the, the cradle was dowed to the block to keep it in the correct position. And also we have, you can see that from the front, we have quite a bit of material are quite a bit more underneath the crankshaft than what you would see in a cast iron block um, to give the uh, to give us more rigidity in that area. As well. Single piece cradle, um, and then we have our half inch stud for our cylinder head uh, cylinder head fasteners. Are all half inch. Okay, so uh, some of the reasons to use a billet block or use our billet block uh, over the factory block. In, uh, so, you know, obviously the, the blocks are more rigid because of our 19 millimeter thick deck, um, much, much better head gasket sealing. Uh, the, the main tunnel is much more rigid and, and we know that uh, through experience by seeing the condition of bearings after our clients have used the engines, um, that you can see that there's no deflection in the tunnel uh, so the bearings are coming out uh, like new. Um, in terms of the weight saving, on a, a wet block we are uh, approximately 20 kilos lighter than the factory block. So that can make a big difference, especially in the Evo application where you have the, the weight on the one corner of the wheel um, or, or, or the front corner of the car. Uh, so that can even up your corner weights on the car and um, 
on the drag blocks, the weight saving might be slightly less, maybe 18 kilos because we haven't machined it out for the water jacket. Uh, the other advantage of going to the, the aluminium product is um, the reusability. So first of all, you're going to get a much longer life out of this block than what you would out of a, an iron block because it, the, it's not going to crack. Um, then also you've got the advantage of a reusability in terms of if you do have a, a, a conrod failure or some sort of internal failure where you damage the block in a cast iron application that may put a hole in the block, it may put a hole into the water jacket area or you may split a bore or something like that. And in, in a lot of those instances, in almost all those instances, sometimes with a split bore you could sleeve it, but if you put a hole in the block or you crack the crankcase or something because of an impact, then uh, the block's uh, in the bin. And even in the cases where it may window the block or, or actually penetrate the crankcase and, and the rod uh, puts a hole in the block, you, we can weld those areas up and remachine the block. Okay, so some of the things that are important when building a billet block uh, versus an iron block or some of the other things that you need to take into account are expansion uh, differences. So an aluminium, aluminium itself will expand at a higher rate than uh, cast iron. So when you're looking at your bearing clearances, you're going to start on a cold bearing clearance, you're going to start a lot tighter than what you would if the block was has a cast iron block and a cast iron cap. Some of the blocks we make, in this case, we have a cast iron block and a cast iron cap uh, versus OEM versus our aluminium one. So what you'll find is when this block gets to operating temperature, the main bearing housing will be about two thousandths of an inch larger than what they would be if it was a cast iron block at the same operating temperature. So the Account for this, our blocks have a main tunnel which is slightly smaller than the factory minimum size, uh, which means that we're starting off tighter. And then we would recommend, depends on the application, in a circuit or street application, we would start off with a tighter bearing clearance than in a drag racing application. And that's mainly because the drag racing engine isn't going to get up to temperature at as high a temperature as what the circuit racing or the street engine will be but just because of the time frame. So um, we like to start with a tighter bearing clearance and then once the heat comes in it will open up and it will be closer to what you would run uh, in a cast iron application once we're at temperature. Uh, what also happens with that is um, we have expansion from the crank shaft centre line to the deck which does change your deck height. Um, of course, you have to make sure you have an adequate uh, belt tensioning system because of the height, it's moving the cylinder head away from the crankshaft, so it changes your belt tension. Um, some of the other things to be aware of are the intricacies of our water systems. All of our blocks, when we sell them to the client, can get, uh, well, they come with a, a PDF instruction sheet talking about torque settings, bearing clearances, uh, issues with the water system being different from OEM. And also you can, you know, we're happy to take calls with technical questions. We also offer a full service. So all of our stuff can be built in the house. We CNC port our own heads. We have uh, an SV20 Sun and Hone. Um, we have a line boring machine, balancing machine, uh, new and seat cutting machine. So we can build the engine, we can supply just parts or we can build the engine complete. Uh, we also have a, a Superflow engine dyno and we can go to the extreme length uh, all the way through to having the engine dyno tuned uh, and set up ready to go into your vehicle.